I'm going to talk about the three biggest mistakes that I see right now that uh, chiropractors are making when it comes to content creation. I'm Lawrence Tam from lawrencetam.com and I help chiropractors become more profitable, more freedom, during, especially during times like these when I help them plan out a specific strategy, pivot plans to help them navigate through these times. Now, today, we are obviously seeing a ton of chiropractors activating one of the key strategies right now is to really what I talked about before, which is about communicate, connect, and care for your clients. And what the trouble is at the moment is that when you start to do that, you kind of just go into action. And what happens when you go into action, which is always a good thing, but the problem is that you're going with action with no strategy. What I mean by that is that you're just pouring a ton of content out into the marketplace to your patients through emails, doing videos, or through SMS, or or whatever you're doing, which is great to see, but the problem is, is that there is no strategy. And what I walk, talk my clients through all the time in Nitro is that you have to have a strategy in place. You just can't randomly push content out. And what I see in the marketplace right now is that they are putting, a lot of chiropractors are putting content out to try to engage or try to connect with their clients, and th which is great, but the problem is, is that it's not necessarily landing. Thanks, Michelle. I really appreciate this. Uh, glad you're watching, and uh, thanks for commenting as well, and I'm glad you're enjoying these videos. So here's the thing. Uh, let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes that are people are making when it comes to creating content. I think what happens is that you're making three big fundamental mistakes. So let me talk you through that and why I think they're a mistake and what we need to do to change it. Because let's think about this, is that if you're just putting content for content's sake, you're actually thinking from your worldview. And what happens is that you're just pushing your ideals, your thoughts and, um, uh, and, and information out there, which is amazing. But the problem is, is that are people, do they care? Your pa do your patients care? Do you have an objective of doing this? And oftentimes we don't. And so let me talk you through some of the mistakes so you can actually avoid them. All right, so let's go to a couple of the things that we're, we're going to talk about today. I think one of the three biggest mistakes uh, uh, right now that people are making is that we are making a massive amounts of assumptions. And what I mean by that is that you're making assumptions based on your 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 how you are feeling, and that's not necessarily exactly how everybody else is feeling. And what, what I mean by that also too, you're making assumption on who your market actually is. Oftentimes, we're trying to create content for your, all your clients, which is could be the biggest mistake you can have. What you want to do is you want to make content that's relevant to your particular marketplace. Now. Your marketplace can be a lot of variety of patients, but the problem is, is that when you do that, you're actually making content that no one really wants to hear. You want to be specific content to people that that wants to hear your message. So specifically, I'm actually talking to chiropractors spe specifically and people who wa will, you're watching this video right now, you are interested in this video because maybe you've actually seen that on my other videos. So therefore you're enjoying it like Michelle, for example. And so therefore you continue to want to watch it because these content is relevant to you and your situation. I don't want to make an assumption that I want to, I mean, this particular content could be available for, um, is probably relevant for all small business owners, but I'm not talking to all small business owners. I'm talking specifically to chiropractors. So in your case is that you do have a variety of clients you do take care of, but let's not make the assumption that everybody uh, you want you don't want to dilute your message and assume that all your content is relevant to every single person because i'll walk you through it there's different of which you've seen my video on five motion five uh, stages of emotions there are people who are in anxious state versus people who are in adaptive state which are totally different emotions right now they don't necessarily need to hear the same message and you're assuming that people need to hear your uh, your opinion on stretches uh, whereas some people may not need that so just thinking about uh, assumption the second thing i think is uh, really important important you need to consider is that we are what we're doing is we're being ignorance uh, having ignorance and ignorance is the meaning that we're ignoring the the fact of where their situation is what i just mentioned to you ignoring sort of where they are at at the moment ignoring the fact that uh, possibly is that maybe uh, they might be in financial trouble or maybe the fact that they don't uh, have an, uh, financial well, not everybody have lost their jobs in this moment in time right there are a lot of plenty of people and my, my clients who are um ha are, are taking care of clients who are who are don't haven't lost their job they have a very secure job they just happen to be working from home so what we need to be is not be ignorant to like what's actually going on to the situation ignoring also the the different types of families that we take care of or the types of people we just need to be aware of exactly who we're talking about so that our message is crystal clear not just a random thoughts of how we want to present and what we think people want to have here. Uh, so the last one is that what we are doing also too, as I see, is that we are copying everybody else. And what I mean by that is like uh, you start to see that everybody's trying to 
do the similar content and the problem with similar content is you become a commodity. Well, how are you different than in the next chiropractor talking to, or the, even the physiotherapist or the massage therapist talking about how to do a better exercise? What qualifies you? Well, if you haven't earned the right in terms of you know your trust and ability that you've earned throughout the years in practice, then that could be a problem. But just say you're brand new in practice. Maybe you're an associate or maybe you're just a new grad and you haven't been able to develop that trust within your patients. Well, you need to figure a way out how to not be a commodity and just not be like everybody else. And so these are the three biggest mistakes when it comes to content creation. So what we want to do is you want to learn from and stop becoming, uh, stop assuming what we want to do is try to predict. And, and so what I mean by prediction is that you have to learn how to be able to see the landscape of what's coming up in the future. What is the next thing they're going to need to see or will need to hear based on their situation, based on your patients? How are they going to, what is the content they need to hear next rather than trying to assume that they need to hear this, right? It's not just about pushing content for content's sake. You need to kind of read the landscape of what's going on right now. My landscape, you know, in chiropractic, in the chiropractic world is that I have clients in the US, I have clients in the UK, and we have clients in Australia for context purposes is that they are all in different pace in terms of different needs and also shutdowns based on their country relevance. So which means my content has to be relevant to each one of those individuals or individual states or individual countries. So which means I have to deliver on content that matters to them at the most appropriate time. Well, you're, you're not typically, you're not adjusting clients from all over the world. However, you do have clients in different realms in terms of different types of jobs or different types of needs. So therefore you need to try to predict what their next needs are going to be so that you're actually talking the messages that you're creating is that is relevant to them. And the thing is for you, what we don't want to do is be ignorant and to the what's going on for them also in the material or ignorant to your marketplace. What we want to do is have clarity. And what you want to do is provide clarity for them on exactly what the message is and exactly um, you don't want to pr predict. I'll give you an example. I've seen a lot of people going, hey, let's provide them 30 things that they can do at home or 30 things that you can play with your kids or here's 400 recipes that you can cook at your home. Listen, people right now don't need 400 recipes, nor they even need 10. They don't even need 30 things. You may might just need one because they just can't even think about what's going on tomorrow. I just need to solve my kids' problems today. So that may be something to think about. Overwhelming with all these checklists and all these things might be too overwhelming for them right now. That's being ignorant to their problem. And what I mean by that is that you need to have clarity. They need clear steps right now. What people need, especially in anxious states right now, when they don't have massive amounts of bandwidth, poor vibe. Adding more content for them isn't going to help them. What you want to do is have more step by step. Uh, if you don't want to be a commodity, then you need to figure a way out to how to be unique. So for example, if everybody's talking, I mean, everybody in the, in every space is talking about how to navigate through this crisis. Well, exactly. That's that it's unique the very first time, but then when two or three or five, 10 other people are telling you how to navigate this plan, who do you listen to? Well, I think you need to listen. You know, the way to be unique is like, what's your style? What do you have to, what do you need to bring into the picture? What is your trust? How can people trust you versus the physio or the chiropractor or the massage therapist or the dentist or whoever healthcare professional they should be listening to, or they probably attend to? What are your, what is your message that's going to be different and distinct and different that is that is unique to you and your style. And maybe it's because, so you need to bring you into this and how to change that. If you want to know more about this, by the way, I've actually did this uh, whole, what I call the 4M system in my Carl Think Tank Facebook group, which we just kind of create some ideas and strategy. I want to provide that for you. If you want to go join that, go look for Carl Think Tank by Lauren Stamp. Go join that. It's absolutely free. It's just, I want to provide content for there. So if you want to know how to kind of fix this, go definitely go into that group. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Carl Think Tank. But I'm going to show you something right now that will help you kind of navigate through this, to think through some of the content uh, you know, kind of how do, how do you sort of move around the ideas? So let's think about the, the spectrum. There's the five uh, stages of emotions. So we're going to go from anxiety all the way to adaptation and action. I didn't put action there because we'll just leave that for now. But you can see that there's a spectrum of different types of emotions across the board. And so when you think about from the emotional state, we also need to consider the capacity, the person's capacity, your patient's capacity to be able to handle information. There's people who can handle high amounts of information right now because they're not that much of an stressed state. They might be stressed about their finances, but they might not be stressed in terms of ability to take in information. Whereas 
Some people in this quadrant have high anxiety, but they have a low capacity of uh, dealing with things because not only they're dealing with finances, but they got kids at home. You know, husband's lost a job. I got so bombardments of 300 emails telling me that I should do this and this and that. And I, I'm scared because my, uh, my mother lives with me at the same time and she's over 70. All of this stuff is too much and the bandwidth needs to be very small. So therefore you need to consider is how do I provide the right information for different people? Well, I think, you know, if you consider that, if you got a, someone who is in, in this region right here, if with high anxiety and to also have low capacity, what I think your advice or anything that you should be talking about is really just the next step. Like literally one step. This is one thing you could do. That's the advice or the content you should be providing. Versus, versus if we kind of think about someone who's over here, um, who is maybe who's who's still in an anxious state um, in this region, but they have high capacity of uh, dealing with information. What you might be want to do is you might be able to provide directional help which means you can kind of give them some sort of direction to point to it because they can have some high capacity to be able to think, but they're still in anxious and panic state. So therefore you just kind of get, need to point in a direction. Now, what if you're someone who is, who's already in the adapt adaptation stage right here, but the problem is right now is that they don't, they don't have a massive high capacity, they're low capacity to be able to gather information. Well, instead of next step, what you want to be doing is kind of move them towards to more step-by-step, -step, right? Now, so what that means is that they were already in a state of emotional state that can handle a little bit more, but they're still got low capacity. You can give them maybe step by steps, which is a little bit more than one step. They might give them three steps to kind of help them move forward. So I hope this kind of makes sense to you to kind of move this strategically. Now, the last thing is over here is that someone who's in adaptation stage, uh, who's able to adapt to the situation, but also at the same time have high capacity, what you can do is then kind of really focus in on being strategic. And so what I mean by that is that you can actually provide a plan of action that will help them kind of navigate through this process. If you think about using this chart here to kind of navigate which content should be best to provide for which person and what type of content to provide, this is how you'd be able to navigate through the storm. Because for most of my client, for example, like right now, we've already dealt with these things, which was all about protection a long time ago, which about three weeks ago, we've already kind of created the steps to now so that we can be more strategic because right now it's about not just about how to get out of this we've already thought that through last week what we're planning for is like how do we actually become better and separate and become a better brand a better business and a better business model coming out of this situation and utilizing this time properly so if you are in that state, if you are in sort of in that adaptation, you've already accepted this situation that you're in and you have high capacity of learning right now and you want have to have a plan then come talk to me. Go to lawrencetam.com or go to joinnitro.com or simply just email me and message me or however you want to contact me. Let's talk about how I can help you navigate through this personally, not just a generic plan that everybody works. And I work with one on one with my clients. So therefore, if you do want to work one on one to build up a strategic plan to help you become stronger and better practice so that you have better freedom in the future, this is it. So this is the time to kind of connect with me because you have a golden opportunity between the next two to three months that would change the trajectory of your business, your life, and also how you practice, fundamentally practice. There's never been a better time for you to be able to make that switch. It's very hard to pivot normally, but when everybody's in a pause, this is an opportunity where you can take advantage. So I hope that makes sense to you and how to create better content creation. If you want to learn how to the 4M model, go to Carol Think Tank uh, in the Facebook group. I hope you've been enjoying these videos. Uh, I want, love doing them, being able to create and just help out the profession. And so I'll be doing some more support calls as well. So just uh, just look out for me and go follow Driver, Lawrence Tam and Driver Practice and we'll figure things out. Guys, I hope this has been helpful. Leave a comment below. Let me know if this is, has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up and share. Most importantly, share this content with someone who does, uh, who does need this help because at the end of the day, these videos are really here for you for free to help you become a better chiropractor and more importantly, better communicate and connect with care for your clients. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, that subscribe button, you should press it. And because I want to share videos with you just like this one to help you grow your practice.